Hi everyone, my name is Maria McDonald. My awesome partner Vishnu and I are gonna to talk to you all about this crazy title project. To make it simple, we're just looking at making mutant bacteria so eat our plastic. So our inspiration for creating this project is that we have been depositing literally tons of plastic into our water. And you know, Mother Earth, we should protect nature. We've all been taught that. However, we don't see this translating to real life because more plastic, there's gonna be more plastic than fish in oceans by 2050. What if you went fishing and just got a plastic bottle instead of a fish? Like that is the reality we live in and people are just like refusing to see that. And so we hope our project sh like shines some light on the issue and makes people actually like think about this in their own life and see how they can help. And how did we get here? Um, I actually joined this project with Maria and this was like, her idea to begin with. And so I was really inspired by it and wanted to join it because I also relate to many of the ideals that she has and that we should protect the environment and we should do that as early as possible in whatever way, no matter how small. And I thought this project was an amazing opportunity for me to actually give back to nature and finally to say thank you for um, keeping us safe. And what have we done? We have started our research and also um, had some lab work that we got in despite the coronavirus. And overall, our message, we want you to go out, pick up trash, you know, raise awareness for the environment because it takes a lot of people to save our earth and we need your help. So in short, Microplastics are very bad. Microplastics are super, super tiny plastics that we can barely see. And a lot of times they get into our food, like fish. If you like to eat fish, honey, it's in there. Microplastics are all over and they make really dangerous bacteria, which isn't good for humans. Rivers are highways for microplastics that go to oceans and ocean microplastics get into our food, like what the fish that we eat. So we thought, what if we help stop the flow from the rivers plastics to our oceans, we could stop microplastics from getting into our food. So there's a special bacteria, which is called Eisnella sacciensis, and it eats plastic, but it's only found on land. It's very picky about where it likes to live. But it has a special gene, like we have just listed there, that codes for a special enzyme. An enzyme is a big science word for digestive juice, and a digestive juice that helps digest plastic. So there's another bacteria that you may have heard of before called Escherichia coli, or as we call it E. coli, and it lives naturally in those rivers that we talked about. So we thought, what would happen if we modified that cool E. coli bacteria with the gene that would maybe let it eat plastic in the freshwater rivers? So overall, the problem that we're facing is that we have these buildups of PET plastics, which are basically plastic from your water bottle, that is going into rivers and then becoming a huge deposit in oceans. And our solution to this problem is to transform E. coli, which is found in water everywhere, with a special gene um, so they can eat the plastic and therefore degrade it successfully. Our general procedure is pretty simple. We've got three main steps. The first step we've actually completed, we transformed our E. coli that we talked about earlier with that special plastic eating gene. And as you can see, there's a picture here of Vishnu in the lab pipetting E. coli. Then our step two is to make our water solution, which we're working on right now. You gotta grind up those microplastics and make them super, super tiny. So it's very similar to real life. Then we put the E. coli into the water we add those minerals and the plastic in so it simulates a real life river. And finally, we have to measure how effective our transformed genetically modified E. coli are. We use a special microscope called scanning electron microscope, which helps us see super, super tiny particles like those microplastics up close. And we're gonna use a special probe to measure carbon dioxide, which is a product of digestion. So when we get to that step, we'll add more data. So one of the main things we're measuring is carbon dioxide, and we want to see this carbon dioxide content increase over time because that indicates that the bacteria has eaten the plastic and let go of carbon dioxide gas as a byproduct of that reaction. So if the carbon dioxide increases, that means that the bacteria is surviving and it's eating the plastic. Also, we'll look at plastic size and we want it to be smaller after the bacteria is inserted because that means that the bacteria has shrunk the plastic particles. And if you put these two things together, as the carbon dioxide content increases, we want to see a decrease in plastic size. 
thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate all your support and enthusiasm. And I am so proud of each and every one of you for being part of environmental activism. You are awesome and you're gonna do great things.